Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my experience with you uh, of what we did uh, during the uh, coronavirus period here in 2020 in Haikou. Um, my name is David Chan, and I am a uh, Korean American uh, from New York. I was uh, born in Korea, uh, but grew up in the, in the States. And uh, I was uh, educated there, and uh, I've been working in the New York area for a very long time. Um, I have my family members are all still back in the States, and my, I have three children, and uh, my youngest child, uh, he was born in year 2000, and uh, he is currently a second year student at Berklee College of Music. And the reason why I'm sharing that with you is that he's probably a very similar age as uh, most of you. Um, and also, uh, as far as education is concerned, uh, I went to uh, Columbia University, and that's where I got my bachelor's degree in economics. And I also got my MBA at uh, uh, Columbia Business School. And I've been working in New York uh, for a very long time. I worked at an investment bank, worked at a hedge fund, uh, worked at a private equity fund. I was a CEO of a very large uh, asset management company. And I started many companies, asset management companies, uh, uh, prior to moving to Hainan about three years ago. And uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about what I've been doing in Hainan. Uh, I'm here as an investor. Uh, I wanted to invest in businesses uh, here in Hainan and, and possibly in the, in the mainland in China. Uh, three and a half years ago, uh, I started a, a Western-style restaurant called the Chimac uh, at Mission Hills uh, Resort area. And about a year ago, uh, I started a second store here in Haiko Gomao, uh, same store, um, but basically focusing on Western food and, and focusing on Western style service. Uh, our clientele uh, has been mostly foreign community, community uh, and many foreigners, uh, they know us. Uh, but of late, uh, we've been uh, reaching out to the Chinese community and more and more we're having uh, more Chinese customers uh, visiting our store. And the reason why I'm mentioning about uh, uh, GMAC is that it is the platform that I use to do a lot of uh, community work here so far this year. And so I wanted you to get a good sense as to what the, what the business was and then um, you know, what is the sort of the nature uh, of, the, of the business. Now, moving on to the main topic of the day, which is uh, the community initiative. Um, so to discuss this, uh, we have to sort of go back uh, about a month uh, and, uh, and think about the, the spring festival time period. Uh, between January 24th and January 26th, uh, both of our stores were closed uh, for, the, for the spring festival. And uh, it was during that time period uh, when the uh, serious alarms started going off here in Hainan about what's happening with the coronavirus. Uh, and a lot of people started to panic. And, and there were some, a uh, lot of false news that was uh, going around. Uh, but by and large, um, everybody was scared. Everybody was scared what was happening in uh, Wuhan, and, but at the same time, everybody was scared here because not knowing and not having all the facts. And the fact that it was Spring Festival and that everything was closed at that time uh, added to this uh, uh, fear. And in order to do anything in this kind of environment, I needed to uh, understand the, the nature of coronavirus. Um, how deadly it is, how it is transmitted, and, and how we uh, individuals uh, can uh, uh, prevent uh, catching uh, the virus. So I spent two days during the uh, Spring Festival uh, doing a lot of research on coronavirus. Uh, it's amazing what you could find online. Um, you, could, you could pretty much uh, get everything you want. Uh, it's probably too much information, but uh, I did spend some time analyzing it. I won't go through the details, but uh, I'm going to share with you the, the conclusion that I came to in, uh, in late January regarding this virus uh, from uh, the perspective of Hainan and, and Haikou. 
So if you wear masks and if you wash your hands regularly, the chances uh, of you catching the virus is lower than you getting hit by a falling coconut uh, while walking down the street here in Haikou. Uh, so it was manageable, uh, especially if you paid attention to wearing masks and washing hands. Uh, but at the onset of the, the virus uh, outbreak, uh, there was a lot of false rumor and false knowledge that was spreading. To give you one example, uh, I have this mask here. Uh, there's a proper way to wear masks. And uh, uh, this is outside and this part is inside. But I saw people wearing this outside in. And also people were wearing it not covering their nose and people were wearing it, not pinching their nose part. Uh, why? Because they never had to wear it. And, uh, but they, were, they wanted to wear something because people said it was necessary, uh, but they just did not know. Uh, so at that time, uh, what, we, what I decided to do was I wanted to do something. Instead of sitting at home, uh, quarantined and, and, and uh, being scared, I wanted to actually uh, do something that we could do to help uh, the, the community. So after doing the research uh, about the virus, uh, I wasn't so scared anymore. Uh, but there was a wide spectrum of uh, people, uh, people's view on this uh, virus. Uh, on the one hand, there were peop some people saying, ah, oh, it's nothing. Uh, I don't need to worry about anything. And on the other hand, there were some people thinking that as soon as they step outside their door, uh, they will die from the virus. Uh, so it's in that kind of sort of very bipolar extreme uh, sentiment that I wanted to do something that, that actually could help people to understand, number one, and number two, manage this uh, situation better. So uh, me and my friend uh, decided to do something uh, during the uh, Spring Festival. Uh, we actually went out and bought uh, 6,000 masks. Uh, it was very hard to find, but miraculously, uh, we did find it. And, uh, and I wanted to distribute this freely to people uh, in need of uh, masks uh, during the Spring Festival. Uh, the, but the main objective was not really to distribute the masks because we we're only giving out two per person and it was going to last them just a couple of days. Um, but what we wanted to do is along with distribution of masks, uh, tell people what's the proper way to wear the mask and, and uh, what they need to do in terms of washing their hands uh, with uh, uh, alcohol-based soap uh, to, to reduce their risk of uh, uh, transmitting and catching virus. So we wanted to do this, and we wanted to do this quickly. Uh, so we basically secured the supply of masks, because that was a very important thing to do. And the next thing that we did was to define the audience. Um, and how do we define the audience? Uh, we said, we're not going to do any special promotion. We were going to just distribute it uh, to people who were walking by and seeing the sign and stopping. It was very random, but we figured there was enough people uh, uh, interested uh, in this uh, uh, event where they will come and, uh, and partake in the event. And uh, another thing that I did was to really uh, think uh, critically about what my capacity is. What do I need to do to make this event successful? And, and third is to assess the need of the recipients. Do they really need this? Uh, to, if they do, then I think the, the reception will be warm. If they don't really need it, then it'll be a nuisance uh, for these people. And then I wanted to uh, get leverage on this idea. And what I mean by that is, um, how do I make this bigger than what it actually is, or how much bigger than what I can do as an ind individual by myself? And also, uh, as I stated earlier, to have a very, very clear-cut objective. Without this, uh, what you will end up doing is um, uh, any idea to help people is a good idea in this kind of environment. So how do you say no to a good idea? Um, and, and, and so you really needed to have a simple, clearly defined objective 
and, 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 and stick to the objectives in coming up with the strategy and allocating resources for that objective, uh, for reaching that, uh, those objectives. So in, in a very simple project, it was a very simple project, but at the same time, these are the elements that I think you really need to focus on to pull off a successful uh, uh, community initiative or community activity. Uh, one is have a clear cut objective. The simpler it is, the better. Um, and have a, a defined audience. Uh, who are you trying to address? And, and also, Identify the need of the audience. Uh, do they need this now? Do they need this later? Uh, do they need this in uh, electronic form or do they need physical uh, supply of something? Uh, do they need this in Chinese? Do they need this in English? These are some of the questions that you need to ask uh, to, to really uh, 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 tackle uh, the, the needs of the, the individuals who are receiving. And, and also uh, identify what you as an individual uh, uh, is capable of doing. What are your boundaries and what are, what's the role that, that you need to play in order to make this successful. And also the, finally the, uh, the leverage aspect. Uh, if you're going to do the same amount of work, uh, how do you make it bigger? And, and to, to give you an example, um, uh, when I used to be a hedge fund manager, uh, we used to do a lot of research all around the world uh, to analyze investment opportunity. Same amount of research goes into whether you're buying 100 shares or you're buying 100 million shares. So if you really want to leverage your research idea, uh, you really want to sort of uh, be investing in bigger uh, pool of money. That way, same idea could result in much bigger return than uh, having a smaller uh, investment pool to play with. Uh, so that's the leverage aspect uh, that I'm talking about. How, to, how do you get your idea and make it bigger and make it much more uh, uh, transparent and, and clear? Uh, I think that's a, a very important uh, concept to think about. Um, so the one of the, uh, I'm going to go through each one of those items uh, and, 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 and use this project as an example so that you could get a clear understanding of uh, w what I'm talking about in terms of what are the critical components that you need to, to do a, a successful community initiative. Uh, as I said, objective, clearly defining it. Simpler it is, the better. I'm going to give you one example. So I'm giving out free masks to people when people are in desperate need of masks. I could have easily put a uh, basket on top of the table and say, I'm taking donations to help people in Wuhan. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have made donations uh, as they were receiving masks. Because at that time, even if you were, had money, you couldn't really buy, buy masks. So that's a good idea. Help people in Wuhan and take donations. That's a very good idea, but we did not do that simply because it took away from the objective. Uh, the objective was to educate the people, not to help people in Wuhan. So uh, we didn't want to dilute our main objective. And, and second of all, we didn't have time to do proper research on which organization that we would donate the money to and how much money would it, we need to raise to have, an, uh, uh, to have a uh, meaningful impact on, on our donation. So if donating for Wuhan was an objective, I would sell those masks at 10 quai a piece and tell people to overpay so that, that we could donate more to Wuhan. So see how the change, uh, so different objectives of the project can change the nature of the project and each component that drives the project. So you need to have a clear, simple objective. And in our case, uh, we didn't do the donation. We just said, here's a mask, but you have to listen to uh, how we tell you what's the proper wear, way to wear the mask so that, that you could uh, learn and you could teach your family members. So our objective was three. So we had 6,000 masks, two per person. We're handing it out to 3,000 individuals. We assumed that those individuals had friends or close friends or family members, maybe four or five. So in a way, 
we wanted to reach out to maybe 15,000 to 20,000 people uh, by distributing, distributing masks to them. So that was our objective, and, and we stuck to it. And defining the audience. Why is this important? Well, if we are 100% targeting foreign, foreigners, we need all English-speaking volunteers. We need all the printed material to be in English so that they understand. So I wouldn't tell a foreigner how to wear mass properly with the Chinese text. So defining the audience also allocated our resource and, 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 and uh, defined what kind of resources that we needed. For this project, we assume that it was going to be 90% Chinese uh, and 10% foreigners. Uh, so that was the sort of the how we defined the audience. And what my role during for this project, uh, I said, okay, number one, um, I needed to find six thousand masks uh, during the spring festival when all the stores were closed. So that was my job. Uh, and I think uh, uh, someone upstairs was helping us because I was able to find it. Uh, it was a little bit pricey, but I was able to find it and secure it so we could conduct this project. And the second thing I needed to do was to distill all the knowledge that I gather from doing the research, make it into simple language so that, that uh, uh, when I collected volunteers in a very short time period, I could educate the volunteers so they themselves could interact with the people who are actually receiving the uh, masks. So one thing that I did was to put together one page bullet points on the message that we want to give to the, the individuals receiving the masks. And I had both English version and Chinese version prepared. So my job was to secure the mask. Without it, there's no free mask event. Second of all, uh, find the volunteers, and, um, and I was able to find uh, close to 12 to 14 volunteers, half of them Chinese speaking and the other half uh, English speaking, and then um, arm the volunteers with the message that they wanted to give to the, uh, the recipients of the free mask. Uh, so I define my role uh, to uh, those tasks, and then I stuck to those tasks. And identifying the need, uh, so uh, uh, to give an example, um, it was late January when everything was closed and no one could find any masks anywhere. That was the prime time to be distributing masks because I think people would pay attention to what we have to say. If we said, okay, we're going to wait one month to do mask distribution, so if we're doing mask distribution today, um, we may get some reception, but it won't be uh, it won't be as useful because now everybody know they know uh, how to wear masks properly, and uh, the supply of masks is more abundant. So when, and who, and how, and why, all these things uh, uh, from the perspective of the recipients, the need of the recipients had to be analyzed and, 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 and incorporated into the strategy. And the leverage is this. Uh, if I did this myself, and it, let's say it took one minute uh, to distribute um, uh, one mask and explain the, explain the proper usage properly, um, then um, I would need 10 hours um, uh, to to distribute 600 uh, masks, uh, it would take me a really long time to to distribute uh, the masks. So what I needed was I needed volunteers, and also strategically I said, you know what, uh, we're gonna do one distribution center in Goma and another one in Haidendao. Why? Uh, because we thought uh, Goma at the time was a little more commercial than residential whereas Haidiendao I thought was much more residential. So we wanted to make sure there was a two points of distribution and sufficient number of volunteers to cover those distribution centers. Um, so the leverage part comes in uh, for this project 
with the, the no, uh, volunteers. Um, and uh, because we had lots of volunteers, we were a actually able to distribute the entire 6,000 uh, masks uh, in one day. Uh, if it was just me, uh, I'd be probably still distributing it somewhere in the, in the in Goma corner. Um, so I made sure everybody came early. Uh, I made the uh, training information very simple so it's not rocket science for them. Um, and I gave them material so that they're properly armed uh, so that they don't need to memorize the whole thing initially. Uh, towards the end of the day, everybody memorized the whole thing they needed to say. But uh, they had a script in front of them, and everybody had a copy, both in English and Chinese, and, and everybody was uh, doing uh, their job very properly. And another thing that was really nice, and uh, this is sort of a uh, side note, is that when you are distributing something that's for free, uh, when people are in desperate need, people are usually very thankful. Uh, so you get a lot of positive feeling and positive energy back from the recipients of these free masks. So volunteers, um, it was cold, rainy day, but the volunteers, were, they were smiling the whole time. And, and they were very happy, and they said it was a very rewarding experience. Why? Because the needs were there, and we were, we were filling those needs. So when you design the uh, project really well, uh, along with the sacrifice of the volunteers and sacrifice of the the, the leverage of the um, leveraging the uh, project with a lot of volunteers, um, people do at the end of the day uh, do get positive uh, reinforcement for their sacrifice and 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 for their time, uh, which makes the projects uh, that much more worthwhile to do. Um, and so the the strategy. Uh, aspect of the, all this uh, is that I incorporated timing. I uh, said so timing is now, not later. Later, you don't need this event. Uh, marketing, I said, you know what? This should not be a CHIMAC event. So on the poster that we prepare for the event, there's no mention of CHIMAC. And in fact, uh, there's no CHIMAC logo anywhere in the uh, whole distribution scheme. I just wanted this for uh, when people were receiving it, uh, as a good gesture of someone, uh, they wanted to make sure you got free masks and, and then you heard how to properly wear the masks. And the culture. So, you know, one day flash event project, why do you need the culture? Well, in order to leverage what I want through the volunteers, volunteers have to know and feel what I'm thinking and what I believe, uh, so that they could transmit that aspect of the whole uh, project to the uh, end recipients. Um, and to me, this was a uh, culture was that, okay, it was very simple. Out of generosity of someone, they spent their own money out of their pocket, bought 6,000 masks, and they were giving away for free. And the volunteers themselves were the agents where they were giving good stuff freely to the recipients. So the culture was that here is a distribution that was being done freely uh, because of the generosity of us. Um, and um, that culture uh, was designed purposely uh, by me so that we could have a successful event and, and the volunteers themselves uh, could get very positive reward uh, feedback uh, from the recipients. And um, the, uh, the last thing that, that, that was very important in terms of strategy here was that, uh, um, uh, that we did this uh, uh, with a very positive attitude uh, among the, the volunteers. Um, it was, like I said earlier, it was a little bit cold and a little bit rainy day. Uh, but uh, everybody was out there uh, drinking hot tea, uh, but with a positive energy. And uh, the, the positive energy uh, is important because, uh, so if someone says, oh, here's a free mask versus here's a free mask for you, and these are the things that you need to do to properly wear them. 
And if you allow me, I will show you how to properly wear the mask. So very two different types of messages were being uh, uh, sent out. One is very passive and the other is very active and engaging. And you wanted to make sure as part of your strategy, what aspect of your project needs to be uh, very active and positively engaging. So that sort of summed up our free mask campaign. It was a very long-winded description of a very simple project. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what I wanted to make sure you understood uh, are the, the following components. I'm going to review one more time. Clear objective. Simpler it is, the better. Defining the audience. Why? Because by defining, you could target and you could change and, and you could have a laser focus strategy. And, and defining the, the organizer's role. So what is your role? Um, what do you need to do? You can't do everything. What are you going to do? Where are you going to spend your time and, and, and allocate your uh, resource? And another thing is identifying the need of the recipients. Uh, who are they? What do they need? When do they need it? Why do they need it? And to leverage. If it's a good idea, don't stop with just one person. Make sure you have an army of people who could uh, represent your culture and your idea to uh, more people so that you could have a bigger project. And, and lastly, how do you incorporate everything into actual action plan? Uh, you need a strategy. And, and, and that uh, requires a little bit of time, a little bit of thinking. So it's one of those cases where more you think about the project before you actually do, the higher the probability of success, success of the project. Um, I know some of you got uh, some uh, uh, WeChat stories regarding what we did and how we spent our time. So some of you uh, uh, received our WeChat story, which is like uh, our diary of what we did during, um, during the virus uh, vacation that we had uh, in 2020 so far. Um, I mentioned about the free mask event, but we also did a lot of other activities. Um, uh, we did <coughs> home cooking contests for people where uh, it was a virtual contest. People submitted their uh, uh, dishes they were cooking at home. And uh, we had um, uh, group chat uh, voting of the, process, uh, of the dishes. And every week, uh, there was a winner. And um, over 50 people, or close to 50 people, voted every week. And we had maybe 12 submissions of dishes. Um, and uh, we'll could share some pictures of this with you. But uh, this was to help people with their boredom. Uh, after about two weeks of resting uh, at home, uh, people were going a little bit uh, uh, stir crazy uh, uh, sitting at home. Um, so we wanted to help people and we had a lot of other activities. Uh, and, the, and the last activity that I should mention is that uh, uh, we had our one year anniversary of uh, Gomao store uh, during the, uh, the shutdown period. Um, so what I did was, in order to celebrate our one year anniversary, I wanted to do something uh, nice uh, for the community. And I identified the students who were uh, Hainan University students uh, who were stuck in their dorms on campus uh, uh, for a very long period. I wanted to send them uh, some free food uh, to, to have. And um, I partner up with the Hainan University to make this project possible. And uh, uh, this time, unlike the free mask, our name had to be visible uh, for the project because it was uh, uh, my store that was uh, making the food and distributing the food. Uh, in any case, any successful project, how small it is, uh, it requires a lot of research, a lot of thinking, a lot of critical strategy formation. And uh, like I said earlier, more you can do uh, to prepare uh, the higher likelihood of success. And another thing, last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is uh, defining success. Um, uh, sometimes success is immediate. Sometimes success is you planting a seed and that could germinate and grow into a big tree 30, 40 years down the road. So you have to, along with the objective of the project, you have to define the 
uh, the benchmark on how you will make success uh, of the project. Um, I hope uh, this uh, is not too confusing for you, and I hope there's an opportunity for us to meet in person and then have a, a Q&A discussion at some point uh, when we're free to move. Um, but meanwhile, uh, it's been an honor and it's been a lot of fun uh, uh, sharing with you uh, some of the experience that we had over the past uh, month or so here in Haikou in 2020. Good luck, everybody. Bye.